Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. Uh, we're here again with another episode, episode 26, I believe. I can't believe we're this far. We're halfway through the year of doing these shows. That's amazing. Uh, last week, we threw out the challenge to bring out a community recipe because we have so many cookbooks in our collection at Heroni Museum, not just um, like the, the official Midland cookbook, which I, a lot of people know, but we have like from service clubs and, and, and special interest groups who have put out cookbooks as fundraisers. So there's some neat recipes that have come out. And since we threw out the challenge, Genevieve, we're first. What have we got? I brought home the 1911 edition of the Midland Cookbook and this was compiled by the Women's Auxiliary at St. Margaret's uh, Roman Catholic Church in order to raise funds for the new church that was going up. That's the church that's there currently before uh, there was a smaller um, brick church on the site. So what I have done is taken a recipe for asparagus asparagus Ooh. soup that was contributed by mrs two dozen asparagus soup two dozen asparagus stalks in a quarter of an onion and boil in enough water to cover them when tender remove the onion well i cheated a bit because we had asparagus for supper last night so there was already cooked asparagus but i did boil the onion took it out and um drain asparagus and save the water cut the asparagus into small pieces then pound it to a paste. And that's kind of Whoa. what attracted me to this recipe, the pound it to a paste. I usually use an immersion blender when I use a, or make a cream soup. Um, but I thought I would see how long it took to pound asparagus into a paste. It took 45 minutes with a <laughs> colander and a, a pestle. Um, and it was still pretty stringy. I have to say I maybe lack the vigor of an early, early 20th century housewife. Uh, then you put it back on the stove with some flour, one dessert spoon of butter. I didn't know what a dessert spoon was. I'm gauche. I only have one set of cutlery. So I guessed that too much butter, there's no such thing as that. So I just put a healthy amount of butter in the pan with a little pulverized sugar and I did pulverize the sugar. I'm not sure to what end but I did. Um, mix them until they're smooth, add the asparagus uh, in the water it was boiled with and then add one beaten egg and a cup of cream and so that's what I did. I made it all this morning, put it back in the fridge and every time my kids went into the fridge, they'd go, oh, what is that? <laughs> Thinking that perhaps it was for supper tonight. Anyway, this is what it looks like. Oh. This is cold. I didn't bother to heat it back up. It is kind of gross looking, <laughs> but you know what? Mm, it tastes pretty good. The interesting thing is I noted that a lot of the recipes in this cookbook did not call for um, a lot of salt to be added. And this, so there's no salt in this. And it's really interesting when you can really, really taste the flavor of the asparagus. It's not the saltiness, I guess, of our food that hits you first. So that's what I made. Thumbs up. Thank you, Mrs. George Chu, for that delightful recipe. Although next time I think I will use the immersion blender because there are a lot of strings left. <laughs> awesome, and, Genevieve. Oh, I it. You know, asparagus is very fibrous to try it. it. Yeah. yeah. Pound yeah. into a paste. Wow. <laughs> so oh, there you go. And you, and you ate it. Good for you. It's delicious. I bet it is. It sounds good. I might have to try that. Yeah. I what have you got over there <laughs> at Penetanguishing Centennial Museum? What recipe have you brought for us today? Well, I think that um, Genevieve's has put me to a little bit of shame because mine was Ooh. not as labor intense as yours. <laughs> <laughs> We also have lots of old cookbooks in our collection. Um, however, we chose to go with one that was a little newer. It's, it's a support. Um, it's like a fundraiser for the uh, Métis, Georgian Bay Métis oh, Women's oh, Circle. Oh, so, delicious. Yeah, this is a, a little fundraiser book for them. It's been out a few years, but I understand they do still have some copies and Perhaps if I give you the information, honey, you might be able to include it with them. Um, Absolutely. Do you sell yeah. it in your gift store? I know we're not open right now, but are you selling it? 
No, no, we bought it from a personal, you know, it was a personal purchase. So yeah. 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 So um, going through the book, there was so much to choose from. It's, there's so many different recipes. They have uh, desserts, there's soups, there's um, a section for um, like kind of like wildlife. There's elk and um, there I came across mm -hmm. one for for squirrel pie. <gasps> Did you? <laughs> well, I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I, they can outrun me by miles. I don't <laughs> climb trees. So there's very little chance that I'm going to be making squirrel pie. So I went with instead. But I thought, you know what? If Dale was still here, he'd have me up that tree getting he those stars. Yes, he would. I knew so. Dale. Yep. <laughs> So instead, I chose to go with um, one of our sister soups, and I chose a harvest pumpkin soup. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So, like I said, it was nowhere near as labor intense as yours because this one, very conveniently, you use canned pumpkin. So <laughs> there was no, no mashing, no hacking, no chopping, nothing like that. <laughs> but it's good all the same. And here's oh, let me see. Can we oh, get it? Oh, oh there it is. Oh, oh. Shipful looking. Yum. Oh. Yeah. It's very nice. It's nice and thick and it's really good. And being that it's in canned, you can have it any time of the year. You don't have to wait till the fall. So yeah, it's in this little book. And as I said, it's a fundraiser for the ladies. So we'll get the information out there for you. Absolutely. And perhaps you'd like to be it's it's only ten dollars, so it's it's a great That's little buy. Good. Yeah. Does yeah. it say who did that recipe in the book? Who donated that recipe? Um, no, they don't for any of their recipes. Oh, okay. They don't. Okay. They don't give um, an identifying person. But there's just such a variety in here. Some of them are newer types of recipes, but like I said, there's elk and there's bannock and things like that as well included. Hmm. So there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's very, very cool. Yeah, make sure we send the information. We'll put them in our post. That way, you know. Yes. When we post yeah, for it, sure. We'll know where to get it. And maybe yeah. we'll actually just make a, 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 like a take a photo or whatever, Jen, and post our asparagus soup too. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. It's like pulverizing asparagus. <laughs> on the, in the time. It's oh a good workout. Can you imagine if these ladies saw our immersion blenders today? Oh my goodness. Or our food processors, which is like my number one tool in the kitchen. I use my food press processor almost every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we Even have, we are an electric, ele electric stoves where you can control the temperature of your, yeah. right. Either yeah. stove top or the, it's easier. The so oven. Easier yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my mom always cooked on a wood stove, and she was really good at moving the pot around. And I'm like, oh, we have an electric yeah. stove. And she's like, no. And she just moved the pot around to the heat that she needed for whatever she was cooking. I mean, she burned a lot of stuff. I'm going to be honest. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> was that from you the know, neglect? Or <laughs> stuff that, that, sorry. Stuff that's baked in the wood oven tastes so much different than it an does. electric oven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember her making bannock in the oven. She made always a baked bannock. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny you mentioned squirrels because you know how in social media, like depending on what you look at all the time, you get more information about. So on my Pinterest account, this showed up like last year, how to render squirrel fat for cookies. Wow. Oh, I know. And I'm like, what do you think I'm looking at Pinterest? <laughs> wow. I bookmarked it because it was yeah. interesting. This recipe was, like I said, for four squirrels. Like, I wasn't even going to be able to catch one, let alone four. <laughs> but I don't know how many you'd possibly need to render the fat to to collect. Like, you'd need a whole parcel of those little critters. I, I'll, I'll send you the article, Jan. I saved it because it was just interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And on a side note, I have eaten squirrel, but that's another story. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so what's our challenge next week? What are we doing? So the challenge next week, um, sticking with, you know, Emmy's Museum Month, I was interested to see um, what your favorite artifact is in your collection. Oh. One of your favorite ones. I know we can't have one, so, do, you know, do you know, but just what top, you know, top five, what's one of your top five favorite uh, 
artifacts you have in your collection. Okay. All right. We can do that. <laughs> we can definitely do that. Because we, yeah. I mean, we all have least favorites because it's like, how do we move that? How do we take <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And it's not that we hate the artifact. It's just, oh my God, it's so big. Anyway. All right. We'll see everybody again next week. Bye. Same time, same channel. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy Bye. your afternoon outside. Bye. 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 Bye.